evening. It's uh, been a big summer for me. I just had a big birthday. Uh, just turned 60, and I, I think I look pretty good. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm yanking you. I'm 50. You know, <laughs> you can't take it back now. I should have told you I was 40. Then you would have said, ooh, he doesn't look well. <laughs> Has a touch of the consumption. So anyway, I just turned 50, and I got my AARP application in the mail. Sort of a little mileage marker on the sludge trek to death. And uh, it took me a while to get through. It's a big, thick packet, and I'm not the sharpest knife in the um, knife thing. And, uh, you know, you'll never confuse me with Alfred Einstein. Uh, so apparently, if I join this organization, the AARP, they will send highly paid lobbyists to Washington to advocate for seniors, which in turn will allow me to get 15% off my shoelaces at the Rite Aid on Thursdays. Sweet. Uh, but here's the best part. If you go to the back of the magazine, you can get for seven bucks a pair of those really big Florida sunglasses with the sides on them that go over your regular glasses. Conceived apparently to uh, dim the glare of the searchlights when you escape from the home. <laughs> I tried some on. I looked like Roy Orbison's gay nephew. Um, but the uh, the hardest part about aging for me is watching my parents age, uh, because I know that I'm next. My dad's 73 years old, and uh, he just can't do what he used to do. Uh, he used to be in charge. He used to run things. When I was growing up, he wore the pants around the house. Well, at least after the court order. And uh, I, yeah, I make stuff up. And my mom's 71, and her hearing's starting to go. We got her some hearing aids. They don't work, but she pretends that they do. Um, she was in the doctor's office the other day, and he had a stethoscope on her back and said, "Okay, Margaret, big breaths." She looked up at him and winked and said, "Well, they used to be." <laughs> God bless her though, She's, uh, she can still do things I can't do. My mom is uh, 71 and she can take a 10 foot quilt and fold it perfectly in 1.6 seconds. When I fold the dish towel, I need to use my chin. She looks at me and says, Tony, you ought to be able to do that, you're a young guy. And I said, Mom, I'm 50 years old. The only way anybody would call me young is if I were dating Cher. What else is ticking me off? Uh, kids, kids. Uh, I have three sons and I've taught school for 24 years, so I think I'm qualified to say that kids today are soft. If you go by a playground nowadays, you see all the equipment has rounded plastic corners, kind of down low, pine bark mulch on the ground. Nobody gets hurt. In the 60s, we didn't have that stuff, but we had what we called monkey bars, and the teachers called Darwin's Selector. <laughs> 15 feet high, steel, anchored in concrete. <laughs> if you slipped off that, you had a choice of compound fracture, concussion, or coma. And if there was a playground accident, you could overhear your mother six weeks later making a phone call. How's little Billy doing? Well, he's eating solid food now and he's squeezing the ball. Good news is that those bolts don't come out of his neck until after Halloween, so we're just going to rat hole the money we were going to spend on the costume and send him up street as a pale, clumsy Frankenstein. <laughs> Does anybody here remember lawn darts? Yeah. Okay. Your parents were morons. <laughs> For those of you unfamiliar with lawn darts, allow me to explain how it works. You send a bunch of 10-year-old kids into the backyard unsupervised, where they throw 14-inch metal tip darts at each other's feet from 20 yards away. <laughs> In slow motion, it looks a little like this. <laughs> we were, thank you. We we're always just one errant throw from turning little Bradley Taylor into Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> But uh, the manufacturer did have a disclaimer on the box. It said, Jarts by Hasbro, the ultimate game of thinning the herd. <laughs> Those are some of the things we had. What we didn't have were um, the child guard caps on the medicines. We didn't have bicycle helmets, didn't have car seats. We didn't have seat belts till 1970. And even then, my parents didn't make me wear them. My mother would hear a plaintive cry from the back seat. 
Mommy, the buckle's digging into my back. Well, shove it down the back of the seat. <laughs> Roll up the window. You're letting out the smoke. <laughs> my parents didn't baby-proof the house. They didn't have to because as soon as I could walk, my father marched me into the kitchen, to the kitchen sink, opened the door beneath and said, A, B, C, D, son. Ammonia, bleach, comet, and Drano, the four horsemen of your apocalypse. <laughs> if any of those pass your lips, you'll die a slow, painful death, and if you don't die, I will kill you and tell God it was an accident. <laughs> that is a 110-volt electrical outlet. If you stick paper clips, bobby pins, or knitting needles in those holes, you get shocked so badly, you'll end up like your Uncle Jimmy. You know the one with the bulge in his pants that mows lawns for the town? and you will be so grounded. That's all I have tonight. Thank you very much. Tony Bates.